Hello Voyagers! Welcome to our expedition. I am Teacher Jelly, your Teacher Wonder, and I will be your tour guide for today's trip. Together, we will be having an exciting journey to the world of literature. So pack your bags and let's go! We just got a message from our captain. He said that we need to answer what's inside this envelope so that he can give us our passports. I know that you're all ready, so let's answer the first question in this envelope. I will give you five seconds to answer each of the questions. Number one, what is 21st century literature? Letter A, anything written and published in the year 1900s. Letter B, anything written and published in 1990 onwards. Letter C, anything written and published in the year 2000. Letter D, anything written and published in the year 2010 onwards. Time is up! What do you think is the answer? If your answer is letter C, then you are right. 21st century literature refers to anything written and published in the 2000s onwards. That includes your favorite novel like The Hunger Games, The Fault in Our Stars, and so much more. Number two, which of these statements is not true about creative nonfiction? Letter A, it tells a real story. Letter B, it is a major genre of literature. Letter C, it tells a realistic story. And letter D, it uses a literary style of writing. What is your answer? Correct answer is letter B. Creative nonfiction is not a major genre of literature. There are three major genres of literature known as poetry, prose, and drama, and creative nonfiction falls under the prose genre. Very good, Voyagers! Way to go! Number three. It is an online journal or informational website displaying information in the reverse chronological order with latest posts appearing first. Letter A, graphic novels. Letter B, blog. Letter C, textula. Letter D, hyper poetry. Correct answer is letter B. A blog, which is a shortened version of web blog, is an online journal or informational website displaying information in the reverse chronological order with the latest posts appearing first at the top. Excellent! And because we have answered all the questions correctly, each of you shall have your own passport. Before we go on with our journey, remember to bring the following items in your luggage the hat of readiness to prepare your mind on the things that we will be learning, the pen of endurance so you can take note and write things that you find interesting, the camera of curiosity to capture wonderful moments of our journey. In today's lesson, we are going to, number one, discuss imagery, specifically visual imagery. Number two, read and analyze the poem battle and number three identify what is visual imagery what are we waiting for i know that you are all excited to go to china and learn about chinese literature let's go ni hao we are here at Lindong District, Xi'an, Shanxi, to visit the Emperor Qi Shen Huang's Mausoleum Site Museum. And we are accompanied by Zi Hao. Welcome to China. Thank you so much for this beautiful dress. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. So, what do we have here? This is the ancient Chinese chariot. These were typically two wheeled vehicles drawn by two or four horses. This is so interesting. Yes, this was used as an attack and pursuit vehicle on the open fields and plains of ancient China. It must have been very hard for the soldiers while they are fighting for their lives and of the country. Yes, in fact, I have here an art gallery of the poem entitled 
Battle by Chu Yuan that perfectly summarizes how one soldier feel while they are in a battlefield. We grasp our battle spears, we don our brass plates of hide, the axles of our chariots touch, our short swords smeet. Standards obscure the sun, the foal roll up like clouds. Arrows fall thick, the warriors press forward. They menace our ranks, they break our line. The left hand trans horse is dead. The one on the right is smitten. The fallen horses block our wheels. They impede the yoke horses. They grasp their jade drumsticks. They beat the sounding drums. Heaven decrees their fall. The dread powers are angry. The warriors are all dead. They lie on the moor field. They issued but shall not enter. They went but shall not return. The plains are flat and wide. The way home is long. Their swords lie beside them, their blacks bows in their hand. Though their limbs were torn, their hearts could not be repressed. They were more than brave. They were inspired with the spirit of Wu. Steadfast to the end, they could not be daunted. Their bodies were stricken, but their souls have taken immortality. Captains among the ghosts, heroes among the dead. That was a very powerful poem. What do you think is the poem all about? That's right, it talks about war. What emotions did you feel after reading the poem? Do you feel sad? Definitely. War always makes us sad and makes us feel devastated. As a popular adage goes, no one won the last war and no one will win the next war. Regardless what side you are, both parties will ultimately have an aftermath. Thank you so much, Zihao. You're welcome. Now, let's go to the Great Wall of China. They say that you haven't been to China if you haven't climbed the Great Wall. Look around you. How do you describe the Great Wall? Is it amazing? Is it beautiful? In literature, what do you call the image that the reader can imagine while reading a certain piece of literature? That is right, it's called imagery. What is imagery? Imagery is like taking a walk here in this beautiful architecture that is made of rocks and cement but not only that, but also enjoying the view of the wall, being able to smell the fresh air, being able to use all of your senses. Looking back at the poem that we read, what imagery can we find in the poem? You are right. It's the visual imagery as shown on the following lines. The left hand trace horse is dead. The one on the right is smitten. The fallen horses block our wheels. They impede the yoke horses. Visual imagery appeals to the reader's sense of sight by describing something that the speaker or narrator of the poem sees. And for that, what images can you see from these lines as I read them to you? Their swords lie beside them, their blacks bows, in their hand, though their limbs were torn, their hearts could not be repressed. Yes, you're right. You can see their swords lie beside them, their black bows in their hand. Though their limbs were torn, their hearts could not be repressed. And the image looks like this, right? In other words, you create mental image as I your narrator or speaker read to you the lines. Another way to create mental picture in the mind is to close your eyes while the narrator or speaker reads to you the passage or any selection of your choice. Try experiencing it yourself. Moving on, can you still find some lines on the poem that have visual imagery? Exactly, dear senior high school voyagers, 
These are some lines that we can visualize from the poem read. They grasp their jade drumsticks. They beat the sounding drums. The warriors are all dead. They lie on the moor field. If you are able to imagine this image, it's because of the help of visual imagery or mental picture or image you can create using your imagination. Wow, what a journey! We visited the Emperor Qin Shi Huang's Mausoleum Site Museum and learn about the bravery of the soldiers in ancient China while they are in the battle. We also walk through the Great Wall of China and experience its breathtaking view because of visual imagery. We learned that imagery is the use of words that trigger our senses. Visual imagery is one type of imagery. Visual imagery is the descriptive words that appeal to the sense of sight. We have successfully analyzed the poem battle through the aid of visual imagery. We are about to end our journey, but before that, let's go to the longest river in China, the Yangtze River. The Yangtze River is home to 416 species of fish, 360 of which are freshwater fish, making it Asia's most fish-rich water. Just like the ship that we are cruising on right now, it's brave enough to cross the wide river all by itself. Bravery is something that we must all possess. Bravery allows us to overcome our fears, no matter how small that is. Is there an instrument that you want to try but too afraid it's going to be difficult? Or maybe there are some books that you want to read but too afraid that you won't be able to understand them. Or maybe there are some goals that you set aside for yourself. Don't be afraid. Just be brave, like the soldiers in the battle, willing to risk it all. After all, life is all about taking chances. I just got an email from our captain telling us to answer some questions before we head back to our ship. I know that you are ready, so let's get into it. You just have to identify which among the lines that I will be reading is a visual imagery. Just choose the letter of the correct answer. You have five seconds to answer the following questions. Number one, letter A. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high or veils and hills. I wandered lonely as a cloud by William Wordsworth. Letter B. Until they think warm days will never cease, for summer has o'erbrimmed their clammy cells. To Autumn by John Key. And the correct answer is letter A. Number two, letter A. The winter evening settles down with smell of steaks in passageways. Preludes by T.S. Eliot. Letter B. There is a place where the sidewalk ends and before the street begins, and there the grass grows soft and white. Correct answer is letter B. Number three, letter A. The flash of white feathers shone against the green leaves in clear blue sky. The majestic bird set a course unknown and swiftly away did fly. Egret Rising by Kelly Roper. Letter B. I have eaten the plums that were in the icebox. This is just to say by William Carlos Williams. correct answer is letter A. Did you get a perfect score? That's very awesome! If you got two or below, don't worry. You can review your self-learning modules and you can still watch the replay on Depot TV Lenorte local channel for you to learn more. And we are back in the Philippines. Wow, it was such an amazing expedition with you. Join me next time as we journey through the exciting world of literature. Always remember that in learning, the sky is the limit. Once again, this is your teacher Jelly. See you in our next literature adventure. Bye!